Hello and welcome back. I have the sun in my face. Uh, this is the March update from the Tao team. Let's get into your Q&A questions. The first question is from Rebellion. He's got a couple of questions actually. And he says, hello Tao team. We all know what you're building is great, is a great project and it will take time. But community building, marketing and some partnerships are some easy stuff that you guys can do. Why is there no development on this? Yes, thank you for your question. Um, I understand that it may look to you like as if there wasn't any progress on community building and marketing, but that is simply not the case. Um, since December 2023, we have increased the size of our community by the factor of four, more or less. Um, in addition, we've had numerous marketing gigs like the recent AMA in our cryptocurrency, uh, the Twitter spaces that we hosted on decentralized uh, on the topic of decentralized AI on our Twitter. Uh, we had new exchange listings and uh, the soon to be launched uh, Tau Forum is also around the corner. And that's just to name a few. Um, also, we have partnered uh, with NVIDIA to take part in the inception program. And we look forward to deepening our relationship with NVIDIA uh, once we launch our products. And we don't just want to have partnerships just for the sake of having partnerships. That's what lots of other projects do. But when we anticipate a partnership, we want to make sure that it's a symbiosis uh, of mutual benefit and a lot of the projects and people that approach us for the scope of some sort of partnership should fall short on that. Uh, but ultimately, yes, we continuously try to expand our marketing efforts. And uh, mid-April, for example, we will take part at the Twitter space hosted by the IBC Roundtable. And um, yeah, if you have any partnerships in mind that you find would severely benefit our project, we are all ears, of course. Thanks. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Killian. As well as the partnerships that uh, Killian's already discussed with NVIDIA, um, what we're also going to be doing alongside Testnet is bringing on, well, looking to bring on at least as many other projects to build on top of Tau. Um, and so we can start to grow the uh, Tau ecosystem as soon as possible. And the next question is, apart from the main goal, aren't there any products or features that you can share easily on Testnet V1 to be released so that people can at least get trust in your project? Well, the main thing with testnet is to really show that we can really decentralize development and i think that's the main feature that's something that's never been done before in the space of blockchain so that is its main feature cheers and the next question is please provide specific timelines for what you are about to release in the near future if everything is for the long term why token issuance in the first place at this early stage specific timelines are a very very challenging thing to implement right now as you guys have seen some things that we thought were going to be developed and ready in January are now, you know, uh, stated to uh, expected at least in uh, April. So things can move about. This is a very, very challenging product. Um, and this is obviously something that, that no one has done before. Um, it's not like we can just go and fork code and just, you know, bring on uh, people who have a lot of expertise and things that we already need. A lot of things that we're having to learn ourselves as well as doing it ourselves. Um, so that makes things a little bit more challenging, but Karim, uh, please do add if you have anything else to add there. Yes. Uh, thank you, Fola. In terms of, uh, sub products and features, uh, to release, uh, as part of, uh, Tau, uh, net, uh, we've considered, uh, releasing the core parser for Tau, which is a world-class implementation of the early parser and it's extremely powerful. Um, however, we back in December, I think we, uh, decided not to release it because there's a, a huge effort as part of releasing any uh, software products. So we wanted to uh, focus on testnet instead, um, uh, instead of uh, releasing another product, which might be a, a distraction. Um, and as Fola mentioned, and as part of our um, roadmap that we've already published on our website and we'll be updating continuously, um, we uh, might make available the, uh, uh, the REPL uh, command line for uh, for Tau. Um, we, we haven't decided yet, but that's a possibility. All right. Fantastic. Thank you, Karim. On to Dana. And he asks, will memoization be the primary means of optimizing the Tau language? And will there be parallelization also? Not at all. Memoization is just a first step. The whole Tau language is built around that direct acyclic graphs, rewriting rules and traversals all just to minimize as much as possible the amount of memory use uh, that implies 
that we have to pay a price in terms of execution time, but also that we could overcome most of the uh, most of uh, of it with uh, the proper techniques. The first step is to speed up computation, as you pointed out, uh, is memoization in the key points. That's already been done and in the most relevant ones. Then came the use of strong forms of normalization of formulas, for example, X implies Y and Z implies W should be represented in the same way in order to deeply reduce computation. As a side note, we already use uh, that kind of normalization in TML for uh, CQC, for example. Apart from that, we could also remove traversal by using cache and topolo topological sorting in direct acyclic graph. And finally, the last, is the last uh, algorithm discovered by Ohad uh, point to the use of GPUs to parallelize the code, the code. but we need to further develop those ideas. All right, amazing, David. Thank you so much. And the next question is from Luciano Apelido. And they ask, how will the Tau project ensure that the that decentralized AGI is designed and developed based on various ethical criteria of different cultures around the world, guaranteeing an inclusive and responsible approach? Right. So um, that's basically also the whole idea of software sentences is that, I mean, in the beginning, it will be hard for anyone to contribute because you will need to write in more like Tau language kind of style. But as we um, implement the support for controlled natural languages, it, the system gradually becomes more and more inclusive as more and more people will easily be able to contribute to the network. So it might be that maybe the first controlled natural language would be English, but nothing stops anyone from also um, providing controlled natural language in different uh, natural, natural languages like, uh, I don't know, German or uh, Spanish or whatever, even indigenous languages theoretically uh, the network could be built in a way that yeah, anyone with any language capability will be able to contribute to the network. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Killian. And the next question is from Francisco Rossi, and he asks, could you explain how the high-level programming language of Tau uses flow control semantics and how the Tau compiler ensures the ability to convert these semantics into efficient and reliable machine code? Yeah, so starting with the second point, um... At least for now, we will not have compiler, we will have interpreter, so there is no conversion to a machine code, maybe later, but not for now. Now, specifically for, uh, more generally for flow semantics, um, it's already explicitly in the Tau language. It is a temporal logic, it speaks, it speaks explicitly about time. So you can say, uh, uh, now do this and then do that. You have uh, the direct access to speaking about the, the ordering in time. All right, brilliant. Thank you so much, Ahad. And the next question is from Manuel Frisnio, and he asks, could you please detail Tau's implementation and funding strategy, including the development and distribution of the Agora token, and how you ensure long-term sustainability, scalability, and security for the Tau ecosystem? All right, this is quite a big question here. Um, so initially, the funding strategy around Tau was built along how long we thought this project was going to take we knew it was going to be a long project from the get-go it wasn't going to be <laughs> it wasn't going to be easy um of course i had and the rest of the development team have made that uh, a lot faster and they've made a lot of uh breakthroughs along the way the main goal at least from my perspective was to make sure that the company had enough to, of, of a long enough horizon to be able to do so um to get the uh, the job done um, and then in, on top of that we had to make sure that we navigated the uh, various regulations that came in, in came in in 2017 and uh, make sure that we abided by all the relevant regulations uh, to make sure that the project lasted long um, <laughs> uh, uh, from a regular, regulatory perspective as well. So that was a really, really big effort for us. If you remember a couple of years ago, we were talking about regulations quite a lot. And a lot of that was just because we wanted to make sure that the project survives and long enough <laughs> to be able to actually uh, release. Um, and that was just the main thing. Right now, 
in a much different phase. Um, right now, we're in a much more growth phase. We have released the, um, uh, uh, the uh, theory and research from Ahad. We have opened up the uh, GitHub uh, uh, repository on Tao language. Um, and there's a lot more that you can see. So you can see right now, it's a bit of a different stage for the project. And what we're doing right now in terms of um, that growth is additional marketing. So we are going to be hiring more people on marketing. We are going to be hiring more developers. Um, and we're also going to be hiring um, more people for the community as well. That's going to be not just the um, sort of more general interactions, but also to be able to assist on um, using Tao language as well. So we want more of a developer evangelist, developer relations type characters on board. Um, so we can do some more face-to-face -face meets with some of the communities as well. Um, now, how do we ensure long-term sustainability? Um, well, that's been a large part uh, 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 put in place by the patents that we've uh, implemented. Um, and that's one large part of what we do is make sure that the projects you guys are protected um, as token holders, uh, as uh, stakeholders in the project, we want to make sure that you're really protected here. Um, and that's one of the large parts of why we implemented these patents, because it's not to shut people out, is to make sure that the flow always goes back into Tau. So when people find out about Tau, we're the only place that they're going to be able to get to use amazing features. So um, the larger that Taunet grows, um, the more likely that adoption will grow with Taunet as well. So we envisage that um, other projects will want to build on the Taunet blockchain for sure, because they will want to be completely decentralized. Hope that helps. Cheers. The next question is from Tanya Teloni, and she asks, could you describe the design and development process of the Tau language architecture, which includes the compiler and virtual machine, and explain how you ensure compatibility, efficiency, and the ease of use at all levels of the language? Okay. Uh, the Tau language requires several phases to execute the program. The first one is the parsing of using the early parser. The second one is validation satisfiability, normalization in our ter terminology. And the last one is execution. We have no compilation linking phase and neither a virtual machine where we run the bytecode as there is no such a phases in our case whatsoever. After passing, we get the parse tree and convert it into a complexed tidied acyclic graph in order to save memory. All the computations are performed directly in the direct acyclic graph, validation, execution, all of them. The syntax of the Tau language is very simple, but at the same time, very powerful. The same happens with other programming languages. So just compressing the direct acyclic graph and making a clean app is enough to start working with. Working with the parser tree compress as direct acyclic graph of all the time allow us to avoid all the different translations you will have in another compiler linker or compiler virtual machine setting. At the end, our program is the data and our data is the program. We work all the time with the same compressed data structure. Regarding the development process, I refer you to the previous question asked by Dana E. We have tried to minimize the memory use as much as possible and now we have uh, introduced memoization in key points and other techniques will follow in order to speed up the computations. So compatibility and memory efficiency is guaranteed by design and the trade-off between time and space could be controlled by techniques uh, we commented previously. All right, amazing. Thank you so much, David. And so Andrew has a long multi-parter uh, which is going to be, it's going to include a lot of uh, really good responses from our team. So thank you so much, Andrew. One thing I want to say before we get into this question, uh, question is that I know you guys have a lot of questions, which is obviously we're on a Q&A, um, but we are going to be building a additional part to the website where you guys can learn more um, and get into and ask a lot of the questions to our knowledge base. Uh, so yeah, essentially ask the questions to our knowledge base and hopefully you get the answer that you need. And the first question is, in your newly published book titled Theories and Applications of Boolean Algebra, in Chapter 9, Overview, could you walk us through the following extensions and functionalities and what they can do to help existing companies 
augment their usage of existing logical programming used for software verification, formal methods, database systems, mission critical systems, and components, components, et cetera. Um, and also, if you could also give us a very brief and short explanation. I could, of course, answer in length, but I, I really warmly recommend to, to not focus on this now. These are all very minor compared to the Cortau language, surrounding so extensions. I warmly recommend for you and for everyone, focus on understanding what is a Boolean algebra, what is an atomless Boolean algebra. Um, then try to understand very well the first chapter, the preliminary chapter uh, in Taba. And then slowly to uh, reach the core NSO and GSS OTC languages. That's really the main thing. Those extensions are, are very minor. So uh, please accept uh, uh, my advice and my non-answer. Uh, I think it's a, it's a good uh, uh, guideline to follow. All right, so that's your answer to questions one and two. Those are quite long, um, but I had pretty much wrapped up everything in that in his uh, last comment there. Um, so the third question from Andrew is, um, how does two variable fragment with counting as a more robust base logic of the Tau language relate to the plan of creating a controlled natural language? Specifically for controlled natural language and the two variable fragment, it, it strongly relates because someone already developed um, control natural language for the two variable fragment. His name is Jan Prat Hartmann, um, a very prominent researcher of this uh, specific logic. He did it for the two variable fragment without counting. We will have to extend it to the two variable fragment with counting. But yes, that's a very strong connection between the two that there is already a very good control natural language for this logic. All right, fantastic. Thanks, Sahad. And Andrew's last question is what are the plans of the Tau team on how to help existing AI companies who just realize and would want to jump on board to Tau? Tau, who has the keys to safe AI, knowing that their current machine learning AI or LLMs is like a Trojan horse that will soon breach the major AI act and it can cause their company to go bankrupt due to legal penalties. Well, um, obviously you guys know that um, Tau language also is also uh, a, a commercial product that we'll be releasing. And um, of course, we'll be looking to work with not just AI companies, but all software development companies or anyone who needs software development um, um, to, to basically make their software development processes better to create much more robust software as well. This next question is from T Gillian and they ask, TFT models can be used to predict future values on different data sets. Along with ZK and FHE, systems make data, data private and scalable. It has been stated that privacy technologies may help us reach AGI by entrusting data as long as it's secured cryptography. The above is being used by a project called Based AI to help solve LLM forecasting formulations and lead us further towards AGI. Is this another route for AI to get to the logic stage without, say, the need of Tau language? Um, yeah, thank you, Gillian, for the question. Um, we at Tau uh, believe, uh, obviously, that Tau is the way to AGI, and mainly for the advantages that we uh, cited many times, which is that uh, logic-based computations are exact uh, and predictable, unlike uh, large, <clears throat> large language models who have their issues in terms of predictability and uh, correctness. Um, however, in the future, we believe that um, we will crack the, the code on how to integrate uh, logic-based uh, reasoning uh, within LLMs, and that's something that we're probably working on after uh, we release mainnet. All right, fantastic, and there's your answer. Um, machine learning can't do logic, but logic can also do logic as well as machine learning. Cheers. And the next two questions are from Can, and he asks, could patents undermine TauNet's decentralization? What if there's consensus for the things that the team disagrees with? All right, so regarding the patents, the idea around the patents is to protect the project and you, the token holders, obviously. What the patents ultimately do is it stops people from being able to copy TauNet. And in that sense, uh, we think it's better that the people who really want to use the decentralized platform of or to get the decentralized features of Tenet, do it 
on Townet. And that's why uh, we don't think there's going to be any issues there. Um, in terms of the, the decentralization in itself, we, in, we endeavor, our, especially on mainnet, to essentially put ourselves out the picture, um, remove, us, remove ourselves from the governance process entirely. So we won't actually have to agree, agree with us um, in terms of how Townet is governed. Um, however, on the, in the side of the patents, there are two separate things here. Um, we have to look at the side of the commercial and we also look at the decentralized. Um, now the decentralized world is completely entirely, uh, baked into what is, uh, on Townet and that's entirely for the users to create and develop Townet. Um, but that is not for commercial use. And that's why we have the, the, the patents will also protect Townet, but also separate it from commercial use. The second question from can is how would machine learning benefit if built on top of Tau? Well, machine learning algorithm never comes in vacuum. There, are, there is always questions to be answered for which you use the machine learning algorithm and then what you do with the output and the whole general picture that this the machine learning use case live in. And everything is interconnected. The way you use the algorithm is and depends on uh, what you are interested at, your background theory, things like this, on a whole world. And uh, if you do machine learning inside logic, then in logic you can formalize this whole world and um, the machine learning algorithm will be automatically implied, even if not explicitly, from your general background. All right, and the last two questions. Dana asks, does Ahad and team have any thoughts on the word to vec algorithm and the new breakthrough one bit machine learning models? Would it be possible to leverage this to build a copilot for Tao language? Well, the same answer applies. This, <clears throat> they are inherently incompatible um, because machine learning is all about um, trying to infer from the data you saw about the data you didn't see, and therefore it will always involve uh, a component of guess, but uh, in logic, it's completely different. Uh, things are uh, absolute and certain. So this inherent incompatibility uh, still applies. All right. And the last question is from Alex. And he asks, in the recent AMA, I had said that logical AI is a lot more computationally intensive than machine learning. Is this something that you knew would be the case or did you find it out during development? And if logical, if logical AI can do machine learning, will it be as efficient in machine learning as current machine learning AIs? So uh, for the first question, we knew it uh, from the beginning because uh, the complexity classes that uh, those problems are uh, live, yes, are well known. And uh, yeah, so we knew from the beginning that logic is, is much more complex. Um, for the second question, um, in principle, in theory, um, if uh, you write uh, 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 some logic that includes also implementation of machine learning, and this implementation of machine learning is separated enough, so to speak, from the rest of the logic, then you can separate it and use um, any existing machine learning algorithm. So in this case, uh, um, pretty much by definition, there is no uh, loss of performance. But um, again, this is in theory, we will have to see the details. I believe it is possible to, to a large extent, but I don't know uh, to say, to put my finger exactly uh, how, um, or, or in which cases to be more accurate. And uh, generally, if you already work in logic and you do your machine learning there, uh, it will not be so separated. You will want to take advantage um, of, of the machine learning implemented in logic, uh, see my previous answer in the a more general background theory. And for this, we will need to come up with, uh, uh, with optimizations. So this, this whole question falls under uh, optimizations. Um, I can think of some rough optimizations that might be useful here, but um, I don't have any final answers for this. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much to the team. And thank you so much to you guys for asking all these amazing questions. Now that wraps up for the Q&A and we'll see you 
on our socials. That's Twitter, that's the new subreddit, and that's on Telegram. Cheers, guys.